you can give us a little bit of background information on the cyberhawks. So certainly, the cyberhawks is our robotics team. They are amazing. We have, I understand, about half of their club here to do a brief presentation and show us their um, creative and highly skilled apparatus. Okay. We do actually have a presentation, so if you want to turn around, would it be okay if we stood up there? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I'm Diddy. And I'm Ava. And we are here representing Team 706, the Cyberhawk. Before we start, um, we would like to recognize Arrowhead for their sponsorship this past season. Um, Arrowhead did provide us with um, a lot of facilities that were really useful during our season. And we have created a sponsor plaque for Arrowhead um, to recognize that. So thank you so much. Oh my gosh, is there someone that I could give this to? Thank you. Make sure to Um, so, Cyberbox and Arrowhead FRC team. So, FRC stands for First Robotics Competition, and we compete under the FIRST organization, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, our team was founded in 2001, and we've been operating for just over 20 years. So, our team is made up of about 20 members, spanning across all grade levels. Our team is also split into three sub teams. So, we have our business team who works on all of our fundraising, marketing, event planning, presenting to school boards, anything like that, we're the ones to do it. Um, build, our build team is in charge of designing and manufacturing our robot for each season. And then our programming team takes that and uses Java to program it to complete the challenges for that year. So what is FIRST? Uh, FIRST is, stands for, uh, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. And FIRST is the organization that we compete under. Um, first, the overall goal is to get students involved in STEM, especially from a young age. Um, so within the organization, there are a few different programs. Um, we have FLL Explore and FLL Challenge for elementary school students, FTC, uh, which is for middle school and high school students, and then finally FRC, which is what we do, um, that's solely for high school students. So every year in FRC, we are given the challenge of manufacturing and programming our own robots uh, to complete a certain set of challenges that are assigned to us. Uh, we manufacture most of our parts in-house. However, we do work with uh, Showbrook Tools in Portland uh, to manufacture the parts that we cannot. So we want to show you, give you an example of what we do. So this is actually a three-minute match from our St. Louis tournament this year. And this was actually the highest scoring match of the entire tournament, and we were on the winning team. So we, for each uh, match, we have to form an alliance with two other teams, and we work together to get the maximum amount of points. So this time we were on the red alliance, and our robot is the one with the little bumpers on the corners. It's the, it kind of stands out because they're not on all four sides. Um, so just kind of give you an overview of what happens during the match. Um, at the beginning, there is a 15-second autonomous period where everyone is hands-off. No it's touching the controller. No, nothing. The robot is doing everything on its own. Um, during that autonomous period, the robot can um, place a cone or a cube onto a rod or onto a little platform where um, we get points for doing that. And then um, the robot can also leave the community, which is a little section um, by where the robots are, are originally sitting. And then they can also balance themselves on what we call the charging, which are these. Um, little ramp type things where the robot has to climb on and then balance itself um, to get back to the point. And then the rest of the match, um, we have a driver driving it, and it can get, the robot can get points by placing the cones on the rod or placing the um, cubes on the step. And then at the end, we call it end game, the robot can park on the charging station. So, um, that was way off. Does this have volume? Sure. I think so. Fine. Yeah.
Otherwise, I can kind of just narrate it for you. So the match started. You can't really, you couldn't really hear the starting of it. But um, you know, so our robot is that one with little bumpers on the corner. Um, so in this match, we left the community, and then um, the autonomous period is now over. And our driver is now driving the robot, and we're going to in that corner over there. We're placing, we just placed a cube on one of the steps. 1339 is going to get a second. Just as great. 3329 support there. 706 joining in the brave try to support their alliance partners as they reach far, far with their arms. <laughs> that high node. 8069 is playing the that, uh, that middle field, both providing a little bit of defense and also picking up those straight codes. Oh. Now racing back to their substation, the six time lines up, making the time with other alliance partners moving back and forth across the field as they do so many times before. 4329 looking to support their alliance partner, section six, as they pick up and place more codes alongside 4143. 4329 drops that cube and managed to put it back into the low node. 706 follows up along with our partner 4143 dashing across the field, mainly moving into their community. 1339, of course, doing their thing, moving back and forth, back and forth across the field, picking up a story covenant on their nose. 8069 playing a little defense on 3143. Slowing down their progress. Except those six racing ahead. Try to meet them there. Then those six almost hit me, but they managed to take, that, take care of that. Give them some balance as they are completing. What is that? Count them. That's five, five links with 39 completing, looking to complete a almost a third link as well. 43, 29, 706, they're looking to balance. 41, 43, looking to complete those as well. 41, 43, really racing to try to get that. They go inside those and go back to stay in the last second. This may be a good high score for today. That's, well, that's their score. It's a 153. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just saw a match. So now what are the benefits of FIRST as an organization? So FIRST's mission is to prepare students for future careers in STEM. Um, our team has a focus on building a school to business talent pipeline. So we really want to connect our students with um, local businesses where they can learn skills that they can use in future jobs or even find jobs. Uh, FIRST also pushes to build leadership, problem solving, and communication skills that can be used in any field, not just STEM. Um, our team really wants to develop a community and encourage diversity and inclusion. Um, anyone who feels like they don't fit in at school can come and find a place on our team. Um, this year, we focus a lot on time management with a deadline. So our season from the announcement of our challenge until our first competition is about 10 weeks, which is a really fast turnaround time to build a robot like that. And um, this year we adopted the project management system Agile to set one week goals to work towards an overall larger goal of going to competition. So we also want to do a robot demonstration for you before we move on to this. So um, the rest of our team has something planned. Um, would you prefer us to drive in this front section or would you drive it up by where we're from? There's Okay. 
add an extra challenge. Right? Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> and then you can all see how impressive it is. <laughs> Just demonstrated problem solving right now. Good <laughs> <laughs> collaboration working together. <laughs> Going a lot better about my technical skills. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> 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 I think that's kind of mostly it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things is we have it where it's student oriented. Um, so we added something where if I just click a button, I can change the direction of the people front and back. Like this, when I click A, it's now that the front and back. It makes it really easy of like wherever I'm standing, I can just change it. Like now it's front and back. And if I want to look like this, then I can just turn it. And now it's like I'm just driving. And, and, and then. And, and then we also program for presentation to our codes for vision. So you can kind of vision to recognize these things called info tags, which are basically like QR codes and they're placed around the field so we can know exactly where we are in place. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see it on the computer, but it's a little fun. Why is there a wow. Yeah, it'll be on, it's on the right screen. You can kind of see it swapping out here. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've seen everything that we do, um, what can you do for us? So one of the biggest things that we're struggling with right now is space. So you just saw us driving around, it takes up some space to drive. And we're working out of a classroom right now. Um, the actual game field that you just saw is actually about the size of a basketball court. And um, it would be really nice for us during our season to be able to set up a practice field um, in the school so that we're not testing our robot for the first time in competition. Um, another thing that we would really appreciate is um, a little bit more funding. Um, right now, we only have about $800 per student um, available to use like this past season. And most schools had about $2,000 per student to use. Um, that gives them a lot more room for um, going to more competitions and just more um, <coughs> freedom for allocating that money. Um, we would really appreciate if the school would be able to give us about $400 per student to supplement the fundraising that we already do. Um, I think that would really assist our team. Uh, and then finally, we would love to make robotics a varsity sport here at Arrowhead. Um, we don't think this request is super out of the blue just because um, a lot of the surrounding schools in the area um, do give their robotics teams varsity status. Uh, I know Oconomowoc, Brookfield, and Milwaukee all give their robotics members varsity letters. Um, additionally, we do need a lot of qualifications. Um, we have a set season every year, 
uh, we do all of our own fundraising as well as uh, attending two competitions a year that span three days each, mixed scrimmages. And then um, finally, our members put in an incredible amount of time and effort into our sport. Um, we meet during the build season every day after for four hours, as well as nine to five every Saturday. And then during the preseason, we meet once a week, every week um, for three hours. So we would really appreciate your support in achieving these goals. And we'd like to thank you all so much for your time and open the floor for questions. How many years has Cyberbox been in the system? Um, we were founded in 2000. Now, were you the robotic team that wrote the first pitch at Miller Park for the Ancam deal with the robot? I don't think I don't. Okay. That was the NAP. Yeah, that, that was, was the NAP. NAP. Okay, okay. I just remember seeing that. That was very impressive. What, is that a question for Ryan as far as uh, working towards a uh, varsity sport for the team? Yeah, but, uh, we'd have to look into it with Ryan. I don't have the particulars of what's involved with that kind of designation. Sounds reasonable, yeah. something to explore. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious, after going through this experience and learning uh, a ton through everything you mentioned, the leadership, the robotics, uh, the teamwork, et cetera, and problem solving, are you desiring to stay in a STEM curriculum and move on to, to engineering, or, or did this experience divert you a different path? Um, for me personally, I know I want to go into a STEM field, um, okay. and I'm guessing a lot of our team members would also agree with that, and robotics has really helped me realize that too. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm a current senior. I'm, I'm Daniel Payne. I'm a co-captain of the robotics team. I'm currently... I'm committed to Notre Dame from mechanical engineering. Great degree. I'm a mechanical engineer as well. Stay ready. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm curious if, if you guys get the opportunity to go see other automation in, in place, um, whether it's in manufacturing facilities where you get to see live robotics. Um, do you get to see that type of application enough, or would you like to see more? I think we definitely want to see more. We did do a tour of the Price Engineering facilities in downtown Heartland, and we're currently looking into doing some more, possibly at Schoberg or Husco over the summer, but I think that is something we do want to explore more. Okay. I'll, I'll open my place of employment up to you guys anytime. Uh, I work for Harley Davidson, and I'd love to have you guys come into our Menominee Falls powertrain plant. We, we can show you anything you want to see. We use collaborative robots, vision. We use autonomous robots uh, for material handling. And we, we use STEM students um, through college co-ops to do a lot of that work for us. You guys are leaps and bounds ahead of where college co-ops were four years ago, two years ago. But what you're doing with this is immediately applicable to what you can do in the STEM field. It, and I, I I mean that seriously, leaps and bounds ahead um, with what you're programming, the, the hardware you're used to. Um, keep keep it up because um, you'll you'll be able to pick where you want to go. I, I also have some opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how much training can you do? So a basketball size course would be ideal if you want to set up a full size practice field. Um, one of the gyms would be nice um, during our season if we can set that up. Um, we also need a height space because a lot of our robots do, um, like a lot of the games require us to shoot um, balls and things like that. So height. Thank you. Any other questions? What happens to your robot now? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the year. Yes. So typically we'll use it for demonstrations like the following year or two. But every year is a new competition. So what we'll end up having to take this apart, we'll end up scrapping it for parts. And then we're going to be done with it. Next year, we're going to be making a new robot. It's every year we make a new robot. So 
if we really like one, we may have one probably from, I think it was like 2018 that we still use just because it looks really nice. So it's a good like practice drive one because it looks nice. Otherwise, every every year, every two years, we take the new old one and strip it down, get all the old parts and put it back on the, on the new robot that we made. And then um, this year we are participating in the summer competition, which is um, one of the teams in Wisconsin. So we will keep it like functioning. Thank you. Gives Grant a good uh, good thing to practice too for his program stuff too. So he can do more of that with the program. Time to Very impressive. Yeah, yes. so yeah very just a great demonstration. Yeah. And thanks to the mentors. I know the adult mentors play a huge role in helping kids and they're spending the time with the kids every Saturday in a competition. So Thank for thank you for volunteering and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for being thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the summer competition. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're getting a bit of a late start, uh, but we'll just kind of roll with it here. So um We'll roll right into the community conversation. Quick set of comments prior to that. Yes. Uh, the purpose of this gathering is to hear from and converse, converse with members of the public. Format is an informal discussion forum. The board president holds the authority to restrict the length of time or cease the conversation with any participant or on any topic of conversation. No predetermined agenda topics will be scheduled, yet some rules do apply. <clears throat> Employee personnel matters are considered confidential and therefore should not be brought up. Address the board as a whole. Do not single out individual board members. Though a majority quorum of the board will be present, <coughs> no official board actions will be taken. Decisions will not be made, votes will not be taken, and official meeting minutes will not be taken. So with that, if we can welcome uh, our first guest up to the podium, if we could state your name and we'll start. Well, then our schedule is good. I have been there. Did you want to say something? Lots of time. Okay. I don't think we can. Oh, please. Um, I don't. I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm in the order, but um, I just want to say that the robotics kids. I'm a parent of four kids on the team, so my youngest is a freshman now. One is at MSOE. One is at Purdue. He's got a ten thousand dollar intern for the summer. He makes more than me. I'm a teacher. <laughs> um, but. It, Something that makes this team at Arrowhead very unique from the other teams, and I've been a mentor since my kids were in fifth grade, um, is that our kids build the robot. So those mentors come after work, and they are here from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m., five days a week, and 9 to 5. I mean, what they do is incredible, but the kids are building that robot. So when you go to these competitions and you see these robots, like $10,000 a piece, right? Um, most of the mentors have stepped in and built it. Your kids at Arrowhead are doing it themselves. And I know my son at Purdue and I know my son at MSOE and Hans this year is going to WCTC next year. Hands down, they tell you that their kid, the kids are nowhere near our kids that come from Arrowhead in our engineering department. So big thumbs up to our Arrowhead department. They're doing what they need to do in robotics and it is fully worth everything that they can give. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if there aren't any further comments, we'll uh, reconvene with our board meeting at 7 p.m. Okay.